Good morning, everyone. It's Francis. It's January 9th. It's 10.02 a.m. outside of Houston, Texas, and we're going to do a short itelescope.net tutorial uh, to see if there's any insight that I have that I can offer to anyone regarding the new itelescope.net, formerly known as globalrenoscope.com. itelescope.net has a new website on itelescope.net, and they are adding and expanding a whole new observatory down in Australia, making more telescopes available to people like myself and yourself. Available meaning you can um, acquire a membership through itelescope.net and have access to all their telescopes uh, located all around the globe in Australia, in Nerpio, Spain, and Mayhill, New Mexico. If you know me, you'll know that I've used the GlobalRenoscope.com network of telescopes and now GlobalRenoscope.com is now known as iTelescope.net and they're adding even more benefits to members, more telescopes for members to use and it's really uh, has been a great experience for me in my search for truth about the space outside our atmosphere. So now I'm going to go right ahead into the information center of itelescope.net. And once you are signed in, and at this point I believe you can still access this information free by using a trial membership. So if you go over to itelescope.net, look for a trial membership. You can get a free membership trial and have access to this same dashboard as anyone else and have access to one of the telescopes that are available. I think they use T3 for uh, their free trial membership and I encourage you to do that because that's what I did first also for myself as I came in and did the trial and then I started using their telescopes from there and it was a great experience for me. But if you are a member or are going to be a member you'll have access to this information center which is the uh, central nerve system for the robotic network of telescopes offered by itelescope.net. You'll see here a long list of telescopes starting in Northern Hemisphere, Mayhill, New Mexico, T3, T4, T5, 11, 14, 20, and 21 coming in February, March 2012. So they're adding a new telescope. Nerpio, Spain, they have T7, 16, 17, and 18 is coming in January, February 2012. Now, Nerpio, Spain has a um, near infrared telescope so I know that I haven't actually used that telescope to my benefit but we will be doing that in the future and for anyone who's listening if you are interested in shooting something in near infrared you can with one of the telescopes from Nerpio Spain so if Nerpio Spain can see your object it can see it with near infrared now right now the only nighttime here as you can see is in Australia and the roof is closed and there's an image of it there and we'll get to that in a second and T9 and T12 from Officer Australia are going to be moving to the Siding Spring Observatory in Australia that uh, itelescope.net is building, currently building right now. I've been watching the construction. You can go over to uh, facebook.com and connect with itelescope.net. You can connect with itelescope.net with their uh, Twitter feed over there. You can see some of it right here. Um, very active and because they have uh, support personnel all around the globe Australia, Spain, uh, Northern Hemisphere, New Mexico uh, and located in Canada their network of support is global so you cannot be without access to uh, some support from itelescope.net and they make sure that you're not without access to support 24 7 so uh, because the telescopes, there's no telescopes available to me right now, I won't be able to go uh, as deep as I wanted to and do a live test of the system, but we can do some other things. Uh, what I'm going to do down here is slide down here, show you what's below here, and below here is the um, all-sky cameras. When there's a telescope open, like right now they have the all-sky camera open underneath the sliding roof of the Officer Australia um, site. So w when the roofs are open and the skies are clear you'll see these cameras active and you can see what kind of night sky you have um, I'll point out right here you'll see there's a discount now uh, itelescope.net I is a membership driven service and they have great benefits and great membership services uh, for members to use the telescopes but they also have great discounts and they have ways that you can 
not be afraid that you're going to encounter bad weather or bad imaging and that's going to eat up your budget of uh, membership points per month because they have a satisfaction guaranteed imaging session and they do moon, moon discounts and the discounts for this is a 50% off it costs 50% less when the moon is in a certain phase and it's um, having an effect on deep dark sky night so they have moon discounts and they have instant credits for satisfaction not uh, you know their satisfaction is guaranteed for your Im imaging session and I have used and, and and been affected by the points back discounts and the points back for uh, imaging session situations and they refund them quickly and there's always a notify notice in my email whenever something goes wrong and I can always count on contacting Pete down in Australia or Brad and anyone here that's in the northern hemisphere Arnie and Christian uh, the support is immense so no fear for support no fear for um, having viewing sessions that are uh, not as good as you want and having to you know spend your points on those because they have great services great membership services now uh, depending on the size of the membership that you get involved with will depend uh, on how many points uh, per hour it costs to use the telescope so remember that if you're going to get a membership try to get a, a membership that you can afford and a membership that gives you uh, as much as possible when you're purchasing it now let's get into I have uh, I have a video which shows me operating the network and let's see if we can get it to play okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the box over to here. And this is me uh, logging on to what we were just looking at in November and when it was still the global .com network telescope. So, but it's now itelescope.net. And I'm going after Comet Levy. And you can see here the sky cams. Well, that's quick. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth. Um, logging back into the telescope. I picked a telescope I wanted to use out of the list that was available, the Grasso 20. It's asking me to log in. While I'm logging in, at the same time in the background, I'm going to um, the International Astronomical Union, the Minor Planet and Comet Ephemeris Service, right there because I'm getting my coordinates now the IAU is where I get my coordinates for near-earth objects comets asteroids this is the place that um, all the amateur astronomer observations go into and they organize and put them in a CGI format so that you can access the code now here I am back at uh, the itelescope.net dashboard and what I'm doing right there is I'm telling the, the telescope what pictures I'm going to take. I'm going to use that line. I'm going to take three pictures, three color pictures, and I'm deciding how long right now I want to expose the pictures. And exposure uh, with CCD cameras is everything. Your naked eye uh, has no exposure. It's instant. When you add on 300 seconds, so that's a 300 second exposure or five minutes, um, you're adding, you're let, opening that shutter and absorbing light from your object for five full minutes. Here you have an option. You can set the telescope to track on something that's moving like a comet. And then uh, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. If you set it to track on the comet, your stars in the background will be elongated and you should have a nice clear picture of the object you're imaging. Um, but it has some effects on things like astrometry and being able to do that. So I've come back here. I'm going to get my code. Now, when I when I do my imaging, I go and get the, the ephemeris right there, right before I, I take the pictures. So I've already told the telescope what pictures I want to take. I'm going to take three color images, 300 seconds, and I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop the code in there. Now, this binning of images is important, and I'm going to do an update on that later. Um, I've been here too, but I found out in the past that 
bending it twice doesn't mean no favors so I need to learn more about bending my images and as soon as I hit the take images I can go to the system status and it's going to show me uh, running uh, what the little program that I ran and in this case we're trying to shoot for Comet Levy on that date about that time there it comes up with the right ascension and declination of the object that you're trying to shoot from the MPC code that I inserted into the text area from itelescope.net you'll see there's another image a larger image of the the sky cam and you really it's like using a telescope almost there are such dark clear skies you can see uh, the Milky Way there so what's important to know about this tutorial for using the itelescope.net global network of robotic telescopes is that you need to know what kind of images you want to take and you need to insert that information you need to know about exposure how long you want to expose the telescopes for you need to know where to acquire your, your uh, coordinates from and in the case of asteroids and comets I use the International Astronomical Union website to acquire my ephemeris to tell the telescopes where to point now um, you having a global network of telescopes is perfect because some objects you can't see from the United States or the northern hemisphere and some objects you can't see from Australia when they're uh, high in the sky so having network of telescopes all around the globe gives you an opportunity to shoot images from all around the globe shoot images during the day shoot images during the night the benefits are immense how to actually access the telescopes and utilize them takes some training it takes some experience and I'll tell you it isn't easy because even after you get the telescopes to work and to take pictures you're not done yet and let's see if we can go back I'm gonna escape out of this and I'm gonna go back here let me stop this so after we've used our telescope to take pictures we have to go access our images and let's see here get my images now here's a nice knowledge base in forums at support.itelescope.net let me see if I can go back because that's not the place I wanted. But itelescope.net, support.itelescope.net is that. Let's just try to get them because this is normally how I do it. See, there's some new interactives here. Yes. And what it does is once you're a member, it pulls you right into your folders, your library of images. Now I'll tell you, important note they only maintain the images on these servers for a certain amount of time 60 days so if you're gonna go and take pictures with itelescope.net and you'll have them all after you've taken them itelescope.net puts them in a folder per the telescope and puts them in there for you you need to go in and take them out and and save a hard copy of it on a hard drive of your own because they empty out these folders over a period of time and I found out the hard way so there's some insight to remember that if you take pictures you can't leave them in these folders because eventually they clear them out because they don't have enough server space over at itelescope.net to hold your pictures for you it's very expensive and the files are quite large so let's see where did I go so I have all the telescopes I used here and and below it there's some JPEGs that, j that they show but let's go into our 10, 14, 11, 9, 12, 28 calibration. See, they have calibration files that they put into your folder that give you um, the the calibrated telescope images, dark frames, subframes that you need for astrophotography. And that is some of the things that I have yet to learn how to use. So in 2012, we'll be incorporating the knowledge uh, that we have about dark frames. So I see that my 15 minutes is running out. 
uh, will access the uh, we'll do more uh, tutorial on the itelescope.net in the future um, get me get with me uh, get with them if you want to use these telescopes because it's a great service uh, a really great 